Trucking Family Podcast, where we talk all things trucking and all things well. Everything from route planning, cooking on the road, and tips and tricks to make you more successful. It's all here on the WTF Podcast. Oh, yes. Happy Thanksgiving Day. Well, actually, a day after Thanksgiving Day. Another episode of the WTF Podcast, Well Trucking Family. Jeff Beatty, Driver Training and Development Manager here. Now, today on the podcast, we have the one and only Dylan Keister, Director of Contractor Services. How you doing, Dylan? Good, man. Pretty good. What's going on? Ah, you know, it's it's another day. You, you had said you had a lot of turkey yesterday, yeah, earlier, I did. right? I did. And, you know, Packers won. Good for you guys. Mm-hmm. Cowboys won. Good for you guys. A good day. <laughs> now, now, um, white meat or dark meat? Oh man, you you, you know me. I'm a I'm a big and I, I have no preference. You don't if discri- it's there. I'm, no, no. If it's there, I'm gonna. Do you eat I'm gonna giblets? Do you eat giblets? Oh yeah, giblet gravy is a staple. Uh huh. I'm I'm all for Absolutely. it now. What about okay? What about like broccoli casserole or green bean casserole? See, here's here's the only thing I'll tell you is I, I'm not picky, okay? okay? But I don't eat broccoli. I've, I've got some <laughs> like like childhood PTSD. Um, and I love green beans, but for whatever reason, I I just I'm not a fan of the, the green bean casserole. Never, never have been. And now, so, have you had regular versus the French cut green beans? I have. Yeah, I have. Still it doesn't just, make a difference. It's not my not my thing, man. That, that is my wife's favorite dish, though. So. Yeah. I do have to look at it every year, but uh, that's good. I appreciate it, though. And then sweet potato, sure. sweet potato casserole. I'm all about it. Oh, yeah, good everything stuff. else I'm I'm here for. Good so, stuff, uh, man. It's good stuff. And you know what else is good stuff is you're heading up an awesome lease purchase program right now. A lease program here at Well, right? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the independent contractor uh, division that we have it's uh, it's just rolling along. We've been we've been at it for. About two and a half years now. Yeah, and it's it's really been ramped up. And um, you're headquartered out of Oklahoma, right? And you recently moved. Correct. Correct. Yep, we did. We did. We um, we actually moved down to Norman, Oklahoma, which is uh, south of OKC, maybe maybe twenty twenty five minutes. Okay. Um, used to be at the Reno building over there in Yukon, right. and um, uh, we decided that we would like to office with uh some more operations personnel so like you've got zach down here sure. um sarah's you, down there uh, yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah, you got some planners check and say you got a fleet manager so mm-hmm. um we felt like like that was the best move to make sure that uh you know all parties are uh are being uh you know, as communicative as possible. That's good. That's good. Now, I mean, you now you guys take on the the IC, you know, which can either lease purchase or lease from us, but also owners, right? Correct. Correct. So, I mean, really, at the end of the day, you know, we um, we take guys and gals that that have equipment secured from wherever. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, if they can't lease a truck on their own or they don't, you know, maybe have the means we've, we've got some options there, uh, with, uh, another entity. Um, but really as long as you've got a, you know, a truck and, and, uh, you know, you qualify, we'll, right. uh, we'll take you on here. Now, what about if I, if I have an older truck, um, let's say I've got a, a 2010, you know, you see a lot of these carriers out there, they limit it to, five years old or no more than six. Sure. What about well? How does well companies work when it comes to the age of a truck for an owner coming in? So obviously we want the uh, telematics uh, to be compatible. So, you know, if a truck has the capability to, to, uh, to obtain our telematics, that's, that's kind of the first check mark. Um, and then the second is uh, one of our shops has to inspect it and okay. give us the green light. So, you know, you could go get an inspection from, you know, let's let's say Rush Peterbilt, right? Um, and we still wouldn't accept it until uh, our shop actually, you know, goes through it and puts hands on it and sure. really validates that 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 inspection was, uh, you know, was done properly. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, I think the biggest question, and, and you know, we get a lot of people that aren't familiar with the the contractor side of trucking. They may have only been on the company side, but. You know, why would somebody want to become an IC? What are, what are these benefits to being an IC? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, 
your your earning potential is what you're looking at. Um, okay. An independent contractor, you know, has the ability to uh, obviously earn more than a company driver because it's 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 just a totally different style of of how you get compensated. Right. Um, but you know, depending on the market, um, and you know whether it goes up or down or or you know stays uh stays in the middle. I mean, a, a contractor has the ability to to kind of make it what they want essentially. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, more flexibility um, from a from an earnings potential, more flexibility when it comes to your taxes. Right. Um, you, know, you can you can come into this with an LLC. We'd prefer you have an LLC or some sort of business entity. Um, and that's just stuff you, you know, you just can't do as a, as an employee. Right. Um, and not to say that there's not benefits to, you know, to being a, a company driver, but, um, we see, we see a lot of, a lot of independent contractors that, you know, they want to run their own business and, and this, this model definitely allows for that. Nice. Now, of the of the successful ones out there, what's what's working for them? What do you find based on the trends of what is getting them there to achieve that financial freedom that they're looking for? Well, there's there's definitely a few things that that uh, that I'll highlight. Um, you know, one of which is is understanding the market um, and understanding you know our freight network. Um, so, for example, you know, contractors have to they have to understand the difference between a backhaul and a headhaul uh, load. And sure. that's that's not something that's complicated, I don't think, but it requires you to look a little bit further down the road than just, you know, one load at a time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, so I'd say have, having that understanding of really looking, you know, kind of at a 50,000 foot level when it comes to your entire week versus, you know, just day at a time, that's, right. that's a huge factor. Um, your fuel costs, that's another big one. Um, well, definitely, um, you know, assist independent contractors with, uh, with fuel prices, uh, because we do pass along hundred percent of our discount. Nice. Um, a discount fluctuates between like 60 and 70 cents on average. Yeah. Um, and, and I saw some of those numbers, um, of, of what the discount is compared to the, to the sign. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's a pretty, it's a hefty discount that these contractors oh, can get. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's substantial. But, you know, we get we get uh we get some contractors through here that uh you know, they they state that nobody's gonna tell them how to fuel and you know, that's fine, that's that's their prerogative. It's their mm-hmm. it's their business. But you know, I as the representative well, I'm just giving you money to go fuel up at these places. So right. you know, it definitely benefits you to at least take that advice into consideration. But um but those two things for sure, and then I'd say I'd say the third biggest one is uh, is freight rejections. You know, yeah. um, not not every single load is going to pay, you know, top market dollar. That's just that's just not realistic. So it kind of goes back to that first point of, you know, you've got to look at things in the big picture. Um, you know, you could make you could make three thousand bucks this week and a thousand next week. Well, right. that doesn't mean the thousand's a bad week. That's an average of two. So. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not if you're not thinking in those terms like a business owner, uh, that's that's sometimes what uh, what gets these uh, these contractors in trouble. Sure, sure, that's understandable. And I know when you mentioned the headhaul market and kind of the backhaul market, you know, a lot of our our uh, power lanes, I guess you could say, is is coming out of the Midwest, um, farming right. out, going into Missouri, Texas, down south, um, Georgia, Florida area, out to the east and the east coast. Um, so we, we kind of run the gamut. We mainly run east of 35. So leaving from the Midwest, a lot of times you do get a higher rate per mile. And sometimes when drivers get out to the east, um, they'll they'll say, I want that one load to get me right back to, to Wisconsin um, or Illinois or, or, you know, out that way. And I think, you know, understanding that sometimes taking two or three loads to get you back up to where the money is pays more than just that one load and understanding that is a huge key for the successful contractors out there. Yeah. And it it goes back to, you know, if you, if you understand the market just overall, I mean, you know, when we, we talk, we talk a lot about how, you know, those days of COVID rates are, are just long gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're still in that mindset, I mean, this is not going to work for you because we're, you know, we're, we're back to reality, so to speak right now. So, 
you know, having that, having that understanding and, and, you know, to your point, you know, thinking of, of different ways of, you know, okay, the rates are what they are in the Southeast. How can I, how can I make up for that? Can I take an extra dispatch? Can I, you know, watch my fuel consumption, whatever. But sure. if you're not thinking about things and, and aren't mindful of them, I mean, you're going to, it's going to catch up to you. Nice. Nice. Now here at well, um, we kind of touched on owner ops. They can come in. Um, with their own truck once they get through the inspection that we have and they can support the telematics. What about a contractor that one, an individual comes in and says, hey, I have my LLC. What are my options when I don't have a truck? What are those options that they have? Well, so obviously, you know, we, um, we can take on independent contractors that have, you know, secured equipment elsewhere. Um, we talked about that. But, mm-hmm. you know, if they don't have, if they don't have those means or, you know, like let's say they can't go lease a truck from, you know, XYZ leasing down the street. Um, there are equipment uh, opportunities with uh, with well truck leasing, which is, you know, a whole different entity. Right. But, um, um, you know, they've they've got 2021 models up to 2024 models. Um, you know, I think you said earlier, you can you can straight lease, you can lease purchase. You've got some you got some different options there. So, right. you know, if you're if you're not able to, to uh, secure equipment on your own. Um, we can definitely, you know, kind of make that, that, uh, uh, that connection with you and, you know, this, this leasing company, uh, that we know of. And in the lease, the lease program, those that just come in, they lease the truck. That's a no credit check, walk away lease, um, where you have your, your lease payment every week. Um, whether you're running or not, you always have your lease payment. And with that, you also get the discounts on the insurance. You have a maintenance program and that all ties in and, and it's deducted from your settlement every week because we are paid weekly here. Um, the other ones are the lease purchase where that does involve your credit in a percentage down. Um, and that's, that's another way that somebody can, can obtain a truck and get a truck and and generally our leases are are they two to four years are they one to three or do we have variables on those yeah so they're they're currently um they're currently two to three year leases okay that, uh, that, that well truck leasing offer so so you know it's it's not like it's uh you know it's not like it's going to be some five six seven year lease i mean right. you've got you've really got the potential to either you know, depending on which option you choose, own the equipment after, you know, a fairly short amount of time or, you know, complete a straight lease after a fairly short amount of time. And in that scenario, in the, in the straight lease, um, you actually get a lease completion bonus uh, from the leasing company. Nice. So uh, you just complete the lease and, you know, you're given a check as long as as long as you turn the equipment in uh, properly. So they could use that check that lease payoff, you know, that, that lease buyback, right. They could use that for towards another truck if they wanted or go on vacation. Right. Take it to the bank. Use it as a down payment on another truck. Can they just turn around and lease another truck? I could. Yeah. Oh, wow. Once once your straight lease is up, um, I mean, yeah, that, that marks the end of, of, of your time with that equipment. So your options are, you know, they basically go back to square one, except now you've got, you know, X amount that you just received um, in a lease completion. So you've, got, you've got some more options and some more flexibility there. That's a great, that's a great option. Those are some great options to have. Um, now, when it comes to like home time for a contractor, how does home time work? Well, so I've, I've, I've always said this when, when dealing with independent contractors, um, you know, you're not an employee. I can't, I can't make you do anything. Um, I can just advise you on what I think the best practice is. So what I typically advise independent contractors on, um, is if you're going to, if you're going to take home time, um, I would say you should stay out to maximize your revenue two to three weeks at a time. Okay. Um, and I'd say for home time, you know, try and keep it at, at three days max. Um, you know, obviously we want independent contractors, uh, to enjoy their home time. I want you to get out of the truck, get out for a little bit, you know, clear your head, but you know, you start getting into day four five, six plus and, and you know, your revenue, uh, that window just keeps shrinking. So, right. um, so typically two to three days at home, as long as you can stay out two to three weeks is, is what we advise. That's, and that's not too bad. Even as a company driver, you know, you, you get that week, out, the week out, get you a day home. You know, most drivers run that three to four weeks. Um, 
sometimes five, but you know, it really all depends on you want to have that home time balance for sure. sure. Um, so well, I mean, you my home time is if you, you know, we, we see this quite a bit. Um, you know, it, when you take your home time is, is, is key. And so what I see happening um, to some independent contractors is they'll take home time, but they'll take it across two different pay periods. Right. So you know, you're ending one pay period at home for two days and then you're starting the next period at home for, you know, one or maybe even two days. So um, I would definitely, definitely make sure that you, uh, you know, you, you time it up to where you're just hitting one pay period versus two. Right. Right. And that's, that, that's a nice flexibility. You know, a lot of, I think a lot of people are worried. I remember years ago, the lease purchase programs, um, they didn't have many protections. They weren't, you know, I don't want to say they were, they, some of them were a little shady, if you know what I mean, <laughs> sure. but, yeah, sure. but it's definitely, it's definitely come around and you can really make a great, you know, career and financial decision, you know, to support your family with that for sure. Um, now, do you find a lot of contractors like to run certain areas or what, what a successful contractor, where do they normally run? Well, so in, in general, um, like you mentioned before, um, you know, we, we tend to operate east of I-35. Right. So um, it's really, you know, you know, we ask this, we ask this in onboarding and we actually ask it before onboarding when, when before people even get here. But, um, you know, are there, are there certain places that you don't go? And, um, you know, the reason we want to ask that is because we, we already, you know, cut the country in half with our, our freight network. Now, you know, in my opinion, I wouldn't want to go out to California, the Northwest, any of those states. So that, to me, that's a benefit. But, you know, if you keep limiting yourself on where you're going to go, um, you know, I had a contractor a few months back that, you know, they wouldn't go to Florida. They wouldn't go to uh, anywhere in the Northeast past Pennsylvania. They wouldn't go to Chicago. And it's like, it, you know, where, where do you go? <laughs> right. So um, we, we really don't care where, where they want to run because, you know, our freight network, like you said, is, is east of 35. But um, but at the end of the day, I mean, you, you've got to get back to you got to get back to where the head home market is. And, and uh, you know, that's that's going to be your Midwest states. Yeah. So even even those drivers, those contractors, I should say, that live in I, I know there's a couple that come to mind where they, they live in the Texas area. They live down south. Um, and a lot of them will like to say, keep me up here in the Midwest, keep me out to the East sure. and back and things like that. Just cause they know that's where as a, as a smart business choice to make. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, that's the, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, you've got to look at it from a business perspective. You know, I, I get, I get contractors that, you know, they haven't, they haven't done the percentage model before. And, you know, you have to get out of your head when it comes to, you know, miles, miles, miles and start looking at, right. you know, okay, what are these loans paying? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so making those business decisions, I think is, is, is key to making this lease work. And I know I've, I've talked to other contractors and when they came in, they've been to some of the other, um, you know, lease purchase, you know, uh, companies where that's all they do. They may have just a handful sprinkle of, of company drivers, but they get a flat per mile rate. So it's just about miles. Right. I used to see these guys going into Hunts Point, coming out of Nogales, just to, to run the miles to, to be able to make the truck payment and, and hopefully bring some change home. You know, and that was, sure. that's one of the nice things because we're percentage here, right? What are our percentages right. for the contractors when they come in? Right. And I, I, I use this in, in some of the onboarding presentations I have, but um, I want to say it was like the, the second or third month I was here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you, you know, specifically what Lou I'm talking about here, but, uh, I had a contractor, uh, call me and basically state this wasn't going to work out because he's not getting enough miles here. And I'm like, well, which, which lot are you referring to? Like, cause I saw you just rejected a load and he said, well, it's going from Juliet to, uh, De Pere. Mm -hmm. He's like, there, there's just not enough miles here. <laughs> not even looking at the revenue. Right. right. Well, that's only what, 200 and, 20 something miles, but yep. you know, yep. what does it pay? So but then I told him what it paid. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take that. But if you can't <laughs> get out of there, miles, it's just, it's, it's, it takes some corrective action. That's for sure to get out of that mindset. But I think, uh, I think once you embrace it and, and, you know, start to look at it from that percentage, uh, perspective, I think it's a, 
it's definitely a better model than the mileage. Right. And, it, and it's a different, it's a different style of running, just like a company. We're not, you know, even on the company side, you know, we're not necessarily a miles company. We do a miles, but there's stops, detention, layover on the company side. Whereas on the contractor side, you may only run 1800 miles a week and your revenue is going to be beautiful, you know, depending upon the area you went. So it's, sure. it's, it's a huge, nice difference. Now, um, let's talk equipment. What kind of equipment do we have out there right now? Well, so over um, over at uh, Well Truck Leasing, they've got uh, they've got twenty twenty ones up to twenty twenty fours, and that's going to be a combination of uh, Kenworth T six eighties, which I would say are not as common as the other models that they offer. Um, those are going to be the uh, uh, Peterbilt five seventy nine ultra lofts. So nice. And I've seen the, um, the the newest thing that I saw in, in some of the new trucks is these engines are now red. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. They, that's uh, that's definitely, nice. uh, definitely been a talking point recently, for sure. Uh-huh. So we're definitely, um, for those that, that, that are in the know, you know, you've got... You've got different colors on your on your engines. You've got yellow engines, which we don't have any yellows right now. Maybe a couple loners out there. Um, we've had some gray ones, but now we're back to the red ones. We used to have red engines, but we're back to red engines. So that's going to be a nice big change for contractors um, and just any driver. I know a lot of people prefer um, the, the Cummins motor, so that's a good thing. That's definitely good. That was an exciting thing to see. Um, so definitely if they're looking for that. You guys have them. Definitely a more, more driver and contractor friendly uh, motor there for sure. Yeah, nice. Now, as far as orientation, where like where do they go? How do, where where can they do that at? Well, so traditionally we've brought um, independent contractors to you know the Oklahoma City uh, area, um, which is obviously now the Norman area. But uh, here recently, um, we've opened it up to we can onboard at any facility that has a uh, well shop. Okay. Um, and you know, the reason being is, you know, if, if we, if we brought contractors to Oklahoma city, um, you know, and they didn't secure equipment and therefore they'd have to go to, to well truck leasing to secure equipment. Right. If, if Greg over at well truck leasing, you know, if he's, if he's kind of hurt for trucks, but he's got them, you know, elsewhere, uh, it really doesn't make sense to bring them here just to send them right back out, right? You know, to go secure their equipment. So um, we can now onboard at uh, obviously the Norman Oklahoma, uh, Norman Oklahoma office, mm-hmm. uh, De Pere, Wisconsin, uh, Winter Haven, Florida, and then Allentown, Pennsylvania. So we've got four different options, and really it works out. It works out pretty well because you know with our with our network with with our area that we you know can can. Uh, a partner with ICs from talking about east of I-35. I mean, mm-hmm. you've really got every corner of you know the country within within that uh, that hiring map. So, um, you know, I, I, I look at uh, I look at contractors coming out of the Northeast specifically. Mm-hmm. You know, if if uh, if you're somebody that lives in uh, you know lives in Pennsylvania, I mean, you're probably going to be pretty pretty stoked to to only have to go to Allentown versus right. having to take a rental car or maybe two or three flights to get out to Oklahoma City. So, and and not to um, mention, quick. all of those locations that you mentioned all have shops. So if if they get their truck yeah. and they realize, oh hey, maybe something got looked over, maybe it was something that they didn't know, or they asked to, can we change this? That we we've got shops at all those locations that can help them out too. Correct, correct. Yeah, and if you're if you're an owner or you've you know you're leasing a truck elsewhere and you're bringing it on here, um, you know, same thing. You've got You've got, uh, you know, each corner of the of the network there has a has a shop you can take the truck to to have it inspected. Nice, nice. Now, so logistically, how, it's definitely up to them. Now, when they do have to travel, let's say they're in Ohio and they're coming to De Pere, or Oklahoma, or wherever they might be going, um, how does that that travel work? How does the expenses for travel are they covered by the contractor, or how does that work? So once um, once you get approved. Um, you know, to provide capacity to well companies. And, you know, if, if your intent is to, you know, either lease a truck from well truck leasing or bring your own truck on, it doesn't matter. Um, your contractor consultant, which I've got four of them, 
uh, your contractor consultant, you know, they kind of, they kind of handle this start to finish as far as, you know, getting your application, getting your process, getting you approved, and then ultimately, you know, figuring out how you're going to get here or to another uh, secure facility. So, um, oil companies will actually pay for, you know, your rental car, your flight. Um, I've had contractors that wanted to take a bus, you know, whatever. Oh, it's, it's up to them. But, God bless them. Yeah. Not sure I'd choose that option, but uh, but we have had a few that did that. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at it. You know, there's um, there's obviously some um, some smarter decisions to make sometimes. You know, for example, if if uh, if I see a flight that's you know a thousand bucks and a car that's you know four hundred and you're six hundred miles away, well, it might might make sense to to take that rental car. So, sure. uh, but yeah, whatever whatever option you want to choose. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can provide that for you. Um, once you actually get to those secured facilities, um, you can stay in a hotel if you want, okay. but we don't advise that because, um, we want you to go ahead and move into your equipment so that you can learn the ins and outs of the truck. Nice. You know, you can get, comfortable. You can go ahead and get it set up. Um, but if you do decide to choose a hotel, you know, you can do that, but, um, it will come out of your, uh, of your second settlement. So, um, you know, I've, I've had contractors choose, choose both ways. It doesn't matter to me, nice. but it's a, it's a plus. yeah, for sure. It's nice that they're able to, you're able to stay in that truck for free. That's really great. Um, cause it, it is basically your home. Might as well try it out, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. Now, the other benefit and the perk of any contractor, you know, here at Well is you're dealing with customer freight. Um, you're right. working, and, you know, and with customer freight, the biggest thing is you're getting a higher rate per mile compared to the spot market at times or a broker. Um, but even still, if, if a contractor's out there and they may they had a high paying load and maybe they just need uh, kind of a short backhaul to get them back to one of our head hall markets. Um, say on the East Coast, they they might get a broker load, but at least they're keeping themselves moving to where the money is, and that's the goal of the planners, right? Maximize right. revenue. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely um, that's definitely an advantage that we have here. Is you know we're we're very heavy on customer freight, and you know it it, it definitely makes for um, you know having some consistency with with knowing what you're going to do versus you know to your point, am I going to have to you know, we're going to have to take a broker load and, you know, we know how those go uh, right. sometimes, but, uh, yep. uh, but yeah, that's, that's an advantage we have, I think is we've got a, we've got a really good group of, uh, of, uh, operations personnel that, you know, they've been doing it a long time and obviously, you know, well companies have been around for a long time and, you know, just, it just provides some stability and some, some consistency for our, our drivers and contractors. Right. Now let's talk about once, a uh, contractor enters into a lease or is thinking about entering into lease, how is maintenance handled? So if I come in and I lease the truck under the lease program, how, how do I handle maintenance? Does that come out of my settlement every week, all the expenditures I might get for a repair on my truck? Or So there's there, there's two options that the leasing, or that well truck leasing offers. Um, and again, this, this is a well truck leasing, um, you know, expense. This is not a well company's expense, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you basically, you'd have two options to choose from with, uh, uh, with Greg, if you decided to lease a truck from him and, um, uh, you've got your platinum program and you've got your silver program. Really the big difference between the two is, is, um, uh, the platinum program. Uh, you, you basically pay a certain cent per mile. Um, your cup, your truck is covered, you know, start to finish over your lease bumper to bumper. Um, nice. you know, at, it's covered as long as, you know, there's, there's things that, um, are not considered driver negligence. So, you know, I've always, I've always used this example, uh, you know, it's kind of a dumb example, but I'll say it anyway. Um, you know, you're running down the road, right? You fall asleep, you hit a tree. Yeah. That's not covered because that, that's gotcha. driver negligence. Sure. Uh, you're running down the road, turbo goes out just because it's time for that turbo to go. It's covered. You're not, you're not having to come out of pocket anything for it. So right. there's a peace of mind with that platinum program that, uh, you know, I feel a lot of contractors, you know, really enjoy because maintenance, you know, it's, it can be tricky and, and, you know, you know, it used to drive, I mean, these trucks, you could have a, you could have a brand spanking new truck and have all kinds of issues and you could have a four-year-old truck with no issues. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of one of those things. So that's the platinum, uh, the silver program, uh, 
that one is basically just an escrow that you that you accumulate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, it's a certain set of mile. All that money goes into a maintenance escrow, and you, the contractor, uh, takes care of all of your maintenance based on what you put into that escrow account. So nice. Um, using the same example, um, you know, if your turbo goes out and it's not under warranty, you know, you're having to cover cover that uh, that repair based on what you've got in your escrow account. So. Um, you know, it is, it is a little bit, uh, obviously a little bit different. There, there's, there's not as much peace of mind, but it's, uh, you know, some, some contractors, you know, they like that one cause they like to be able to, to manage, uh, manage their own funds when it comes to repairs. And, uh, but I would say most, uh, most like having that, that kind of blanket of protection, uh, with that platinum. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, the other thing here, well, whether your company or contractor is we've got this open door policy when it comes to clear and concise communication. You've got a dedicated contract settlement representative you work with. Um, and they can also, now they, they have that ability to, to read their settlements. In fact, have you seen those new settlement sheets that came out lately? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I, uh, I really, I really think that's been a big, um, and, and not just at well, because, you know, a previous, a previous company I worked for, you know, settlement statements can be, they can be tough to read. Yes, they can. I mean, there's, there's a lot of information, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's just a lot. And if you, unless you're alert, you're used to looking at, you know, spreadsheets and, and, you know, unless you're just, you know, used to kind of following the way that layout is, I mean, you can, you can have some trouble reading it. So, um, I do credit, uh, uh, I know Alexis was, was very uh, yeah. involved with that. Obviously she's over settlements, but and Max. You know, Jerry had a lot of, uh, say again. And Max, our good old marketing marketing yeah, man yeah, here. Max, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max, Jerry, there were there were quite a few people that were uh, that were involved with with making this look uh, look a lot more a lot more user friendly. Um, and I can tell you, just like you, I've been I've been doing this a long time, and you know those older settlements. Not yeah. that I don't know what I'm looking at, but sometimes it takes a minute to to really find it. So yeah, uh, I think I think contractors will definitely be pleased with this new layout. Definitely, definitely. Now, as far as anybody's interested in, in getting into the lease program, what's the next step they can take? Well, so um, really, I mean, you can you can call one of the independent contractor consultants we have here. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, you know, uh, that that that's one option. I can give you I can give you a, a couple numbers here, but I'd really I'd really stress to to anybody that's interested. Um, Really, really would like for you to, to talk to an existing uh, contractor that we have. Okay. Um, you know, I've I've always said it since I've been in this business. The best recruiter at any trucking company uh, is the driver and contractor that's actually doing the work. So, um, so if you do talk to one of my my contractor consultants, um, I've I've taught them uh, basically to have you know five to ten uh, contractors in the fleet, kind of in their back pocket, to where you know. If, a, if an incoming candidate wants to learn more and wants to talk to somebody actually doing it, they've, they've got a resource there. But uh, but to get a hold of uh, to get a hold of one of the contractor consultants here, um, I'll give you I'll give you kind of our uh, kind of the main number with some extensions and then uh, um, our like on call number here. So sure. main number is going to be nine two zero three three nine zero one one zero. Okay. Um, I got a couple. I got an extension here. Uh, that'd be fifteen oh eight. That will get you to the Oklahoma City Group. Um, you can also reach us after hours and on the weekend um, at 405-494-4995. And that's going to go to either uh, Blaine, Jesse, Alex, Spencer, or myself. We take uh, we take turns um, being on the on-call phone at a nice. week at a time. So, uh, so 24-7, 365, you can always reach somebody here. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I appreciate that. that. That's really good to hear. Um, so definitely anybody that's interested, they need to reach out to one of your contractor consultants, get the ball rolling. And how soon can we get them in? If I call at the beginning of, you know, let's say I fill something out Monday, you think you can have me up in orientation by next week or are we have a waiting list right now? To be honest with you, the, the good thing about, you know, the, the consultant processing their own application is, you know, we do get a quicker turnaround time. Right. Um, you know, the compliance group helps us out. They're they're tremendous about making sure that you know things that we might miss get caught and get updated. But uh, um, 
but generally I'd say, I'd say if it's, if it's past 72 hours, it means something might be wrong with the application. So okay. uh, we, we try and get you an answer within, within 72 hours for sure. And the good news is we offer two classes a week nice. um, so that, you know, in the event that either due to travel restrictions or, <laughs> excuse me, or, you know, application issues or, you know, whatever the case is, uh, if you can't make that first class, you know, there's a second one offered so that you can get here that week. Wow. That's great. That's great. Well, I'll tell you what, Dylan, I appreciate you taking the time and sitting down, um, with us, even though it was via the phone. And, and for those that didn't know, Dylan's actually down in Oklahoma right now. Um, I'm up here in Wisconsin. So Dylan, I want to thank you for taking that time. Yeah, absolutely. Always, always a pleasure, man. Not a problem. So, um, so just to wrap things up here again, if anybody's interested in being a contractor, uh, the number they can reach out nine two zero three three nine zero one one zero and dial extension one five zero eight. That'll get you in contact with our OKC contractor consultants. Um, or night and weekend, you're sitting at a door, your company's not making you you know feel pretty good. Give us a call twenty four seven four zero five four nine four four nine nine eight or nine five. Dylan, what do I do? Nine five. Nine five four nine nine five. So, alrighty, Blaine, Jesse, Alex, Alex, or Dylan will be there for you, and we've got two orientations that start every week. So, Dylan, thank you very much again for stopping in. Hope you have a great week. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. All righty, and for all those out there who are interested in, you know, not only the contractor opportunities, but even the company driver opportunities that are available to us, um, check out wellcompanies.com. Whether you're looking for a driving career or a non-driving career, uh, you will find them there. We also have our company store. And check us out on YouTube. We've got a lot of shorts. We've got a lot of regular videos. Uh, we've got some old nostalgic ones from a couple years ago to some new ones and some new shorts. So definitely check it out. Max is here on the engineering board. Thanks, Max. He gave me the thumbs up as the per the huge. So without further ado, I'm Jeff Beatty, your driver training and development manager. Thanks for stopping in. If you're on the road, be safe. We appreciate all you do out there. And for those that aren't in, in the truck, we appreciate you stopping in and listening. And this is another episode of WTF Podcast, Well Trucking Family. Have a good one and be safe out there.